55 years ago today, an uprising erupted in the L.A. neighborhood of Watts. Yeah, 30 people, 34 people, I should say, were killed and buildings were burned in the unrest from August 11th to the 16th in 1965. Los Angeles Urban League's president and CEO, Michael Lawson, joins us live to tell us more about it. Good morning to you first, sir, and, and thanks a lot for being with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. The unrest grew out of frustration over high unemployment rates, of course, poor police relations and racism. So how does what happened 55 years ago still parallel with what we are seeing today? And what are the differences? Well, the differences are huge. The situation in 1965 was absolutely, it, it, was, it was horrible. Mayor Yorty would not even accept federal money for job programs that would help um, the black community. The schools were segregated. The police department was as racist as could, as could possibly be under Chief Parker. He was calling people uh, in the riots monkeys in a zoo. Uh, it was uh, it, the relationship between the police and the community was, you might as well have been in Selma. Mm. It was just that bad. Wow. And yeah. So sorry, we didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, looking back on this history, it's so painful. And then, of course, we had the 1992 riots after Rodney King was beaten. And can you tell us how the LA Urban League has been trying to help reform policing this entire time? The LA Urban League has been in Los Angeles for uh, 99 years. Next year will be our centennial. We have been in the forefront of uh, economic empowerment and with job training all throughout this history. But it's not just job training that we've been in. We have been an advocate for uh, black and brown people in Los Angeles since we have been here, uh, men and women. And the fight has to continue. But understand, we have made a great deal of progress. But you can see, if you can compare what happened uh, just over the past few months with all of the killings across the country, with police acting, quite frankly, following the model that LAPD designed under Chief Parker, making it a militaristic organization that was really an occupying force within the black community. Mr. Lawson. We are the model. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand that. Uh, we have learned, uh, of course, a lot from uh, the Watts uprising. Can you talk about more about what we have learned and, and what ways have things improved, if they have? Things have improved incredibly, but we, it, there is still much to do. A lot came out of the Rodney King uh, consent decree. Uh, we integrated the department significantly, but we are sliding back 50% of the African-American officers in LAPD are due to retire over the next four years. We have to redouble our efforts to make sure that our police department reflects the community, and that has to be done quickly. Um, when you talk about things that have changed, there is more communication, there is more understanding. Uh, but we are, as you can see from the activities of the last few months, we are still not where we need to be. Um, and, and that is something that, that the politicians have to own because they are the, they're, they're doing, they're not doing what needs to be done in order to change the relationship between the police and the, and the community. Now, LAPD, if the community safety program is a model that should be looked at across this country. The community safety program is a program where officers are, are assigned for a significant period of time to a particular neighborhood. They get to know the neighbors. They get to know the people that they are serving, not people that they are trying to police, but people that they are serving. And you, you, we have seen significant results in that uh, capacity to the extent that Chief Moore has, has, has increased the community safety program and made it a full bureau in LAPD. We are making progress, but we are not quite there yet. 
And Michael, it's been 55 years since the riots. Have you seen a change in the community? We've seen so many young people out trying to push for change. I am very proud of the young people who have been out there uh, making their, their issues known. I am very proud of what Black Lives Matter has done and it, making sure that, they, that there is a light shining on this issue. Um, but there is just so much that still needs to be done. When you look at the problems that we have now, think about how bad it was back in 1965. Multiply what we're going through now times 100 and you will get a small understanding of how bad it was back then. I was 12 years old during the 65 riots. Hmm. And, and I will tell you, even then, even at that age, I understood why this was, why it was important for our community to fight back. All right, well, Mr. Lawson, we are glad you are doing what you are mm -hmm. doing uh, today and making things better for us. We appreciate you for coming on and you're always welcomed. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.